All right, so today's plan, play How the Grinch Stole Christmas for Nintendo DS. You know, I'm not really in the mood for that one. Maybe you can have Coca-Cola <laughs> Hey fellas, don't mind me, just having a trauma episode. You know, it's been three years since I talked about the coke soak and three years since I said hey fellas for the first time. How did I keep it up that long? You know, as proud as I am of everything I've talked about, there is still one thing that haunts me. The coke soak. I can't even drink Coca-Cola anymore without having a trauma episode. I've had enough of this. You see, ever since I made poorly educated jokes about corporatism with helium coursing through my vocal cords, I just can't shake this feeling of the coke soak off. It's terrifying, I can't shake this feeling off, so the only way to get rid of it is to talk about the coke soak again. Why am I doing this? The Coke Soak. My favorite example of why certain brands shouldn't do certain things. You already know the drill for this one. The Aquazone was a generic water play area that opened at Universal Studios Hollywood in 1999. It was good enough for what it advertised itself as. It won an Urban Beautification Award, then it closed a year later and got cocified. In all fairness though, there is a bit more history to this one. The Aquazone wasn't even the first thing that stood on the land. The area was a parking structure up until 1990 where it opened as an American Tale Live. It's definitely an American Tale. Live! I don't know what to say about this one, it was a fun little kitty musical that adapted the film pretty well. That's about it. The show was alright all things considered, and it lasted seven years before being demolished and replaced by the Aquazone. This is not a neat little kitty musical. Three years later, there's still not much to say about this one, it's... It's a generic water play area. There was water, some benches, Maybe a sign even. This thing is very poorly documented. I've got nothing on it. The reason it's so poorly documented is because Universal was barely able to squeeze a year's worth of life out of it before it got cocified. Ah! You already know how this goes. Drink meets Universal, Universal meets money, the Coke Soak happens. How do they get away with this? And a year later, the Coke Soak opened in its place. I'm honestly convinced this thing took about a week from conception to opening, and the other 51 weeks were just spent dicking around. Speaking of conception, there isn't really much information on how this thing came to be. Around this time, Universal had a weird fixation on Coca-Cola, with specific variants and flavors being exclusive to the parks. They put a lot of money into advertising it too, like it was this big thing that would get people to come to the parks. Is King Kong not good enough? Well, the Coke Soak opened in 2001, and... It's not a neat little kitty musical. There isn't really much to say that I haven't already said. There's about three things in the entire land. You've got lips, a bottle, another bottle. What a sign. I could sneeze and I'd have a scale recreation of the Coke Soak. Those are the only three things of merit in the land. Everything else is benches and water cannons. I take back what I said earlier about them conceiving and building this in a week. It probably could have been done in three days. And here, ladies and gentlemen, you see the entire budget for the Coke Soak. They really cared about this one. I can't get too mad, this thing was very obviously made for little kids, but like... This is one of the most famous theme parks in the world. Could they really not have done anything better? Well, apparently not, because this thing remained in the park for 11 years with nothing but water cannons and bottles to its name. How? You gave this thing almost as much time as Terminator 2 3D right next door. How long was this brand deal? The land is overall just disappointing, there's a few cool things scattered around, but like... It's not enough to make me happy. Not that I need to be happy, but it's not enough to make me happy, okay? Just go with it. A criticism that I made three years ago that I do want to take back is the lack of brown water. Regular water's more than fine. Like, I was a dumbass for that one. It's a fun little area for kids and nothing more. If I had the chance to go there, I would be enjoying the hell out of those benches. After almost 11 years, the Coke Soak closed in January of 2013, alongside Terminator 2 3D right next to it. Terminator 2 3D will become Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, that ride isn't good, and then the Coke Soak would become Super Silly Funland as part of an almost year and a half transformation. The demolition of the Coke Soak is just kind of depressing to look at. Cause like, there wasn't much to demolish. It's like looking at the death of a loved one but much funnier. Just over a week after closing, the entire thing had been gutted, save for this pair of lips. I really want to know where that is now. And so that was the story of the Coke Soak, an interesting brand deal, sure. Interesting is the best I can give to it, not good. It was confusing, why was there a whole last Coke area at Universal Studios, and better yet, why did it last 11 years? There was nothing interesting in the land, it was a water play area, sure, but they could have given it a lot more personality. They could have easily just chucked a couple more props around related to the Coke brand, but no! MONEY! I'd argue the temporary replacement was better. Walls. Oh man, there's so much fun to be had! As dinky as Super Silly Funland is, it is a much better fit for the park, and there's actual theming here. It's a fun little area, much better than the Coke Soak, but the Coke Soak is much funnier. It sucks, sure, but a weird part of me found this sense of... I don't know, amusement in it. It's just weird to me that Universal Studios Hollywood, one of the biggest theme parks in the world, had a small-ass water play area dedicated to Coke, a brand that had nothing to do with movie magic. I will state it again though, this thing is not good. Overall, as dumb as the land is, it is kind of depressing to just see it gutted like that. I never went there myself, I only got the chance to check it out after it became Minion Palooza 2013, but I still have this sense of... I don't know, connection to it? It's probably because the land gave me so much, if I never talked about it three years ago, who knows where I'd be today? 
Probably talking about the Radiant Radish or something? I don't really know. Still, it's an interesting piece of history, and as much as I want to shake it off, I don't think I ever will. Doesn't mean I'm okay with that. What, what, what the f Oh my god! I made it! I've got to burn it all down! Guess I'm stuck here now. <sighs>